extra mind are people that make news. There are people that shake their world. But people that have accepted the ordinary and the normal, people that have packaged or garaged themselves in a normal and confident and ordinary level, God never used them. I come today to charge your spirit again. To shake you. To make you move from ordinary to extraordinary. To change your mindset Amen. concerning Christianity. The word Christianity has not been understood by believers. Yeah. They are born again. They are child of God. But yet, they have not yet understand what Christianity Christ is like. You look like Christ. You do like Christ. I come with a topic which I titled Two-Face Christianity. Christianity is two edges world. It's a sword that has two sides. Christianity is life with two faces, not just one face. You have one, you have another one. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, for what Ever is born of God overcomes the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Listen, if God is your father, then you must overcome the world. Why is it, you know, the world of Atom is preferred. The world of Atom, in my own simple way of understanding, is winning the battle. So when I hear overcome, it means that I have won the battle. So if you are born of God, then you must win the battle of the world. In other words, the world that is the battle. There is a battle. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Apostle John was speaking and he said, He said, Therefore, rejoice, O ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. It's two kinds of people. The heavens and those that dwell in heaven. The heavens is the throne of God. The doors that dwell in heaven is believers that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Even though you live on earth, but you are oppressed by the power of the Holy Spirit, you dwell in heaven. He said, rejoice. But look at it. He woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The people that live for the world. In this world, it's a world to them. Why? For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has he had but a short time. In other words, if you operate in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's a rejoice because you dwell in heaven. Yes. But when you Walk in the pattern and system of this world is a world to you. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to lay foundation for you to understand what I mean by two-faced Christianity. Christianity 
is about two spirits and one body. Two faiths and one body. The spirit of a lion and the spirit of the lamb. One person has two spirits. And in the natural, in the physical realm, these two spirits never work together. You can't put the lion and the lamb together. The lion will be there for the lamb. And come the lamb as a food. But the spirit of a lamb and the spirit of a lion is upon our life. As a believer. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Verse 5. If you start from the beginning, the Bible said that Apostle John was taken up to heaven and he was shown that there is a book and this book contains the secret of life. How to make it as a Christian, as a believer on earth. How to survive on this earth because the earth was not designed to favor any child of God. So if you are asking why God is not coming to intervene or God is not seeing what you are going through in life, you need to understand that you are living in a place that was programmed and designed not to favor you as a child of God. And the book that contains the secrets that you need to know and you need to put them in practice so that you can live on earth but enjoy the blessings from heaven. Oppressed by heavenly powers. The secret of life. And the book was sealed. And the Bible said no one is worthy to open the book or to break the seal. The word worthy means capacity. The word worthy means someone who is, you know, able or ability to do what no one can do. No one who is worthy to open the book. And he began to cry. The one on the other touched him and he said, with not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seed. Listen, it's not the lion of God, not the lion of the tribe of heaven, not the lion of the tribe of God, but lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion face was made to face this earth. In verse 6, and the lamb face, face was made to face heaven. This is what, when I break it down, bring more details, you understand what I'm saying about. This is why believers were having problems. I have seen many men and women of God with giant faith. They started well, but at the end, they are nowhere to be found. Many sickness has came on them, crushed them with sickness and disease. Devil has scattered their marriage, scattered their finances, scattered their home. The problem is from here. They operate with only one face. And you can't survive as a child of God. As a Christian, you can't survive and you can't go far with Christian race when you operate with one face. You never go anywhere. And it, it looks like God don't answer their prayer. It looks like God is not responding to them. Or it looks like God is a lie. But they miss the principles. They miss the principle. They have only the face 
face of the life and they have no face of the life. And Jesus said to the disciples, they said, in me you will have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation. In the world, and we are in the world. He said, you will have tribulation. And the face to confront tribulation is the face of the lion. But we use the face of the lamb. That's why we fear. We never go forward. This knowledge has given me going a Christian life. He said, and behave, and know in the midst of the throne, not in the world. The lion was in the world. The lamb now in the throne. The lion of the tribe of Judah on earth. The lamb of God. Where? In the midst of the throne, the four beasts, and in the midst of the elder stood a lamb, a lamb, as it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. I took almost two months and it to teach about the seven spirits of God. It's one spirit. Function in seven dimensions. Say so the Lamb, Jesus, is the Lamb of God, not the Lamb of Judah. But when he comes to the world, he don't answer the Lamb of God, he answer Lion of the tribe of Judah. In heaven, he answered, not Lion. He don't use the lion spirit of praise in heaven. He used the spirit of lamb. On earth, he used the spirit of lion. And this is the problem of believers. We are gentle by nature. It does not mean that we should be gentle in the spirit. Devil is not a gentle man. Demons are not gentle. Sickness is not time. Sickness, cancer, is not pleasant to your body. We use that gentle spirit we have by nature. Operate in the things of the spirit. And Apostle Paul said that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Now, the spirit of a lion is a spirit of dominion. It's a spirit of strength and boldness. Bible said in Proverbs 13, verse 30, it says, Lion is the strongest in the beast that he turneth not away from anyone. Strongest. Listen, it didn't say lion is the strongest in heaven. So we're in the beast, in the field, in the forest, on earth. Prophet 5, 30 verse 30. Prophet 30 verse 30. He says the strongest and the tunnel not the way. I have not seen anything that terrifies a lion. An anxious lion. I have not seen Lion being afraid of anything. It's a lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away from anyone. From anyone, nothing. That is the spirit. And Bible said that the righteous, they are born as what? Not as lamb. Not as lamb. 
This is where we miss it. The enemy began to take advantage of that. That's why we can't stand to go forward in Christian life. That is why when we engage in battle, we lose battle. Because we walk with the spirit of life. Lion standard strength. Lion standards boldness. When they threaten the disciples after the death, after Jesus ascended to heaven, they threatened the disciples, they beat them and flogged them and told them not to preach this gospel again. What kind of gospel are you preaching? And Peter gathered them in out of apostles. Peter gathered them and they began to pray. And he said, Lord, give us boldness. Give us what? Boldness. That's great. That we may preach the gospel. And Bible said that the spirit of great grace come upon them. Great grace come upon them. The spirit of love will stand as humility, meekness, and submissive. Humility. Listen. Lion spirits will take you to the top. But lamb spirits will keep you on top. Lion spirit is a spirit to fight battle. It's a spirit, he said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has what prevailed. He didn't say he worshiped. He said he does what? He prevailed. Prevailed means he won. He overcome. He win. He rule. Prevail. It's a spirit to fight. Fight. Powers. Principalities and powers, territorial forces, territorial demons, can touch from darkness, marine spirits, serpentine spirits, demonic spirits. He said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind you. That is the spirit of a lion to conquer the forces and powers of darkness. This kind of spirit is not a spirit of gentleness or kindness. I am gentle by nature in physically, but if you come in place of my prayer, if in fact you will say something is wrong with me. I don't pray gentle prayers because the enemy is not gentle. The what must I be gentle? The agenda and the plans of the wicked are not gentle plans. Why must I be gentle? You keep quiet. They take your husband, take your children, take your job, take your finances, and you are crying. You miss it. Miss it. You need the lion spirit. You need the lion spirit. The lion spirit is the spirit to exercise dominion. It's the spirit to rule. It's the spirit to exercise power and authority. I give unto thee power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. Scorpions represent enemies that come openly. They show who they are physically. You know them, you see them. They don't hide their agenda. They don't hide their plans. They don't hide even their movements or their, 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 you know, their ways. That is scorpion enemy. Then the serpent. It's enemies that come in a common way. They pretend to be friends, but they are not friends. They pretend to be happy, but they are killing. They pretend to come to join hands with you, but they are destroyed. Bible says in Genesis that the serpent was more cunning 
the serpent was more cunning than any other his business in the field. The serpent was more cunning. So when Jesus said, I give you in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. It means that the enemy that you don't know and the enemies you know. That's what it means. Serpents and scorpions. So those animals or those animals, their character represents the kind of enemy Jesus is talking about. And he made it all and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall be enemies unto you. These are enemies you know, enemies you don't know. You tread upon them and you take the lion's spirit to win this one. But the lamb's spirit is another thing we in fact this issue has been a problem in the life of believers where they're supposed to package the lion spirit and bring up the lamb spirit, they misplace it. They use the lion spirit instead of the lamb spirit. Sometimes they use the lamb spirit instead of the lion spirit. They misplace it. They don't know how to use it and when to use it. When to use it. The land spirit is a spirit of humility. Bible said that the humble he died in justice. The humble he teaches his way. The meat shall inherit the world. <coughs> in James, in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Who is wise among you? Let him show it by his conduct, by his character, by his lifestyle, by his way, and by the, and he said, by the meekness of wisdom. Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him shoot out of a good conversation his work with what? Meekness of what? Wisdom. This thing has nothing to do with strength. It has nothing to do with dominion. It has nothing to do with power. Authority. This is meekness. The meek shall inherit. Inherit means that what belongs to you that you have not gotten of it. Inherit. It belongs to you. It belongs to you as a child of God. But it's not in your possession. Like Bible said that you is said upon man side there shall be deliverance. And the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. Possess their possession. It is their own. But they are not in possession of it. They are not in control of what belongs to them. So that's what he means by possess their possession. It belongs to them in Christ Jesus. But it's not with them. Hallelujah. So the meat shall inherit the earth. It means that they will inherit everything that belongs to them in Christ Jesus. The meat, this spirit of the lamb, a spirit that gives you access to the throne of grace, a spirit that opens the treasure, the seven redemptive treasure that Jesus Christ paid with his blood. The kingdom treasure. This, listen, when you appear before God with the spirit of a liar, you destroy everything. You even destroy your life. You come with humility. Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he said, Let this mind be in you. Which was? In Christ Jesus. The mind of meekness. The mind of 
humility. The bride. He knew that he was, he, if I, he is God. And he never considered himself as God. Rather, he break himself down and go through the process. What he's supposed to go through in life. And after going through those things, you know what he did? Bible said he gave himself for everything. He took the position of a man while he is God. That is humility. And Bible said that and God gave him. You know, you need to know. One day I will teach about identity. Identity talk about names. You need to know what is behind the name. Name. God gave him what? A name. He didn't give him more car. God did not give him a house. Even Satan said, Bow to me and I will give you the glory of the whole earth. And God really said, Jesus, my son, I have given you the whole earth. But he gave him what? Name. There is something in them. God said to Abraham, Anyone that bless you, I will bless. Whoever that costs me, I will cost. That is the two faces I'm talking about. The two edges sword. Say the word of God is sharper. The word of God is sharper than two edges sword. The two faces. If this one bless, I bless. If this one cost, I cost. Each side function perfectly. And God said to Abraham, I will make your name what? Grace. Grace. Name. Abraham, I will make your name Grace. Jesus, he gave him a name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every name shall bow. That is humility. So, humility, meekness, and submissive open door for you to have access to the throne of grace. When you have access to the throne of grace, that is where you receive revelation of the scripture. You read the word of God and enter. That is where you receive prophecy. That is why, they, because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He teach you all things with the spirit of humility. He said the meek. The humble. He guide the justice. And he will show them. So if you want to see, if you want to come before God, you bring yourself down. Humble yourself before him. Be obedient to his word. And worship him. And lie down. Praise his holy name. Then the key, the door will be open. Because you have used the right key. When Jesus said, I have given you the keys of the kingdom. The keys means the principle. The principle. You don't use the prayer principle to open the door of finances. You use the financial principle to open the door of finances. You use the you know, uh, prayer principle to deal with demons. Fasting and prayer. Deal with them. We pray. That is the key. So many of us have been using the wrong key. Wrong key. To open the wrong door. And it looks like God is not here. Give, it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. So the spirit of lion is to exercise authority and power and dominion over every powers of the wicked, powers of the devil, destroy powers, destroy forces of darkness. The spirit of a lamb is a spirit that usher you, give you access to the presence of God, to the throne of God. Listen, among all the beasts that Bible recorded in Revelation in heaven, lion was not among. Lion was not needed in heaven. 
even now. You don't need spirit of lion in heaven. You need it on earth. You need it on earth. You need to be violent in prayer. It's a right from the time of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. But those that are violent in the spirit take it by force. Not by gentle, by force. Not by gentle, by force. And there is no beast in the field that takes things by force except lion. The lamb is always calm. Even if you told the lamb you want to kill the lamb, and you tell the lamb I want to kill you because I need your meat for Christmas celebration, the lamb will say, Man, no problem. <laughs> and you like, like this, and you like this, and you like this, and you like this, and you bring the knife and you say, oh, this is the knife and we use to cut your hair. He said, man, no problem. Uh, and you cut the hair. And this is how, how believers' life is going. The enemy torments your marriage, torments your job, torments your finances, torments your hope. And you keep quiet. But lion, the moment lion see you, you will be the one running. <laughs> When even if lion is sleeping and a heavy hero could three fall by the side, boom, he never jump up with him <coughs> until he finishes sleep. Then he wake up and talk. Look what fall on him and walk majestically. But a dog. Or a lamb, any any strange noise, they are shocked. They began to take off. They began to run. This is the life of believers. We are praying to the lamb spirit. We, you know, we, you know, you know. So I told you last time that somebody said to me that I hate the God of Old Testament. I love the God of New Testament. The God of New Testament is good. He was doing good. He was healing people, setting people free, doing all kinds of good things. In fact, he did amazing things. But the God of Old Testament, oh, he's like a vampire. He was killing and sucking blood. He killed a lot of nations and destroyed them. And they go, 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 go. So, okay. Okay. You will, see, you will soon need that God of Old Testament. Listen, I, I am tempted, you know, tempted to go deeper, but due to understanding, I need to pause a little. But let me chip in this. Listen very, very carefully. God used man, woman being like me and you, to do his work. Satan used man. Woman being like me and you to do his own work. So when you are casting out the work of Satan, you need to cast out the one Satan is using. Let me leave it there. We are in Europe. In Africa, I go deep. Let me leave it there. Wait, who do you think that Satan used to do his work? Animals? No. no. He used man. Who is a witch? Is it an animal? No. It's a human being. A wizard? Animal. And he used them to persuade evil against their life. He used them to afflict your body. He used them to attack you. That's where we miss it. Though. That's where we miss it. We are so gentle. We are so kind. We are all Jesus' love. Everything about them, Jesus is love. But you don't know the other side Jesus is. When Judas went to show Jesus, Jesus said, to, you know, Jesus said to him, you know, said to him, whatsoever you want to do, do it what? Preach. Do it quick. Do it quick. Listen. Bible said that Satan entered Judas. 
The same Satan entered Peter. And Jesus called Peter. He prayed for him. Cast the, you know, cast the Satan out. And Jesus said to Peter, I have delivered you. When you recover, deliver others. Mm -hmm. Then I was asking, what about Judas? He didn't pray for Judas. He cursed him. Is Judas not a human being? And according to the tribe, Judas is the cousin of Jesus. Judas is his cousin. He didn't pray for Judas. He is the same Satan that entered Judas, entered Peter. Why did he pray for Peter and not pray for Judas? And push Judas to destruction. You need to think that. You can't be wiser than God. Otherwise you destroy your destiny. You end up as a believer that, know, that did not make an impact in your society. Was you anointed? Yes. Was you, was you called by God? Yes. But what, you know, what is your impact? No impact. No impact. Because you, you know, you bring emotion into spiritual things. You bring culture into spiritual things. You bring a, you know, a, a kind of understanding into spiritual things. And the enemy takes advantage of that. Destroy everything God has used to bless your life. Burn the devil out. Whoever the devil is using must pay. Satan cannot use you against me and you stay standing looking at me. No, you can't stand. You can't stand. Never. When he looks for who to use, you know why Satan enters serpents in the garden of Eden? Because that is the only animal. But you say that the animal has that nature of what he needs. And he enters snake and you snake. So anywhere he goes, he looks for whoever that has the character or nature of what he needs and enter that one and use that one and destroy the work of God. So we need to know how to use this spirit. When to use it. When you are before authority. You come with humility. You come with meekness. When you want to learn, you humble yourself. When you have a leader, somebody or, or, you know, ahead of you, you submit. You follow. You humble yourself. You learn. You get something. Before God, you get something. Before the Holy Spirit, you get something with humility. But in the place of prayer, don't be gentle. Don't be gentle. Apostle Paul said, pray all kinds of prayer. All kinds. Not, so don't select what to pray. He said, pray all kinds of prayer and all types of prayer. Pray all. Pray. That's why I love praying in tongues. Because the Holy Spirit knows exact prayer. He wants me to pray. So when I pray in tongues, he challenges the prayer. That's why it's not Thank you, Lord. The man you sing has come to worship you. The man you sing has come to worship you. Call him Savior.
name of Jesus. I want you to say something concerning your life. You know, the disciples were following Jesus. And they have heard that John was teaching his own disciples how to pray. They heard that, but Jesus never taught them how to pray. And they asked Jesus, Master, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, say. When you pray, say. So prayer is about saying something. And what do you say? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So when you pray, say something. So when I say pray, you must say something. Tell God that any sins of your father, sins of your mother, from sickness from the family, sickness from the bloodline, any disease whatsoever family demons or altar that is affecting your life, let it be cut off. You will not suffer the sins of your father. Save me in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, as I pray. Lord, as I pray. As I pray. As I pray. I will not suffer. And I will not suffer. The sins. The sins. The error. The error of my parents. Of my parents. I will not suffer. I will not suffer. The error. The error of my family. Of my family. I will not suffer. I will not suffer. The error. The error of my community. Of my community. As I pray. As I pray. Every family power. Every family. Family order. Family order.